I ended up using more beakers than they mentioned. So I need a hot sauce packet. Um, they have a bottle of sodium hydroxide, which has a concentration of 0.1 moles per liter, a 30 milliliter syringe. I used a lot of beakers here, so you can grab those from your kit. A 100 milliliter graduated cylinder. You're also gonna need a plastic or a barrel pipette. They say funnel, but I didn't end up using it. And same thing with this stir rod, which I don't know about you, but it was really hard to get out of the packaging. You're also gonna need this pH meter and this little balance. Additionally, you're gonna need a ring stand and a clamp. You have to calibrate the pH meter before you start using it. So you're gonna need a quarter to open the, the back. You just twist it to the right. You're gonna see there's this little rubber seal, this O-ring, make sure that that doesn't fall out. So you have two batteries, right? You'll notice one side is flat and has a plus sign on it. That's gonna go face up. Same thing with the other one. Then go ahead and twist it to the left to make sure that it's closed. Then you just have to press the start button or on. So this pH meter, it has um, a glass bulb, which is porous and needs to be stored in this salt solution at all times, except for when you're using it. You don't want it to dry out. And so whenever you're not using it, make sure it's in there. If for some reason it was laying out, it needs to soak in this salt solution for at least 10 minutes before you use it. So we're gonna calibrate it using these three buffers that come with your kit. These act as reference solutions so that the pH meter knows, okay, this is what a pH four solution looks like. This is what a seven solution looks like. And the instructions are in this booklet that come with your pH meter. So you're just gonna perform a standard calibration. Your kit comes with these three buffer solutions that should be used to calibrate the pH meter. So we have a pH 7, a pH 4, and a pH 10. So we're going to be doing a three-point calibration. This is even better than what we do in person in Fullerton where we normally just do a two-point calibration. So to make this easier, I'm gonna pour them into these little beakers that I've labeled. And it's really cool because they add um, coloring so that you can easily tell the difference between these buffers. So typically the pH four buffer is kind of this pink color. The pH seven is yellow. I bet you can guess what the pH 10 is. Purple. Just kidding, it's blue. Ordinarily, when you're done with these, you wouldn't pour them back into these bottles because you might contaminate it for everyone else. But since these are your bottles, feel free to pour them back in when you're done. So we want to be able to rinse this pH meter off with distilled water after every single solution. But we don't have a wash bottle, so I'm improvising. I put some DI water into this beaker. Um, you want to put kind of a lot so that it's dilute. This isn't ideal, by the way, because you don't want to contaminate the pH meter, but since I don't have a wash bottle, it's the best I could do right now. Since this glass electrode is sensitive to ions, you do want to use distilled water and not tap water. I don't know if you can see, but there's a glass bulb on the bottom that's very sensitive and fragile, so you don't want to touch it you don't want to scrub it with a paper towel. You want to be really careful. Don't bang it against anything. When you rinse it, you want to wipe off the outside and then just carefully dab the bottom. Do not scrub it with the paper towel like this. This glass electrode is how this pH meter works, so we have to be careful with it. So first, start out with the pH 7 buffer. Make sure that that glass bulb is totally immersed under the solution, even if you have to tilt the beaker. Mm -hmm. 
and then you're just going to press this calibrate button. It's going to recognize that you're looking at a pH uh, 7 buffer, so it'll say 7 on the face. And then I messed up here because you're supposed to wait until you get the message SA and then it will say end when it's done. So I'm going to have to calibrate this one more time. So press the calibrate button. It'll say seven. Then I just have to be patient this time. So sorry it's cut off, but what it says is SA and then it says end, then I'm okay to take it out. So in between solutions, I want to make sure that I rinse it off. Dab it gently, wipe off the outside. Then we're going to use the pH 4 buffer. So once again, press calibrate. I know it's cut off, but what it says is 4. Then it's going to say SA. When it's done, it'll say end. It's not ideal to be dipping it in this same container of distilled water each time because I could be contaminating it, but I'm assuming that there's not a lot of liquid on the electrode that I'm rinsing off. It's much better if we had a wash bottle to rinse it. All right, I'm gonna repeat the last, uh, repeat everything with the last buffer. So press calibrate. It's going to automatically say 10. And I know it looks like I'm pressing the button down, but my finger is just sitting there. You don't have to hold down the calibration button. And then we're ready to go. So cut the corner off of your hot sauce packet. You're gonna get your balance ready, so you can turn it on. Put your 250 milliliter beaker on the balance and press tear, that will zero it. Then we're gonna put a pipette into the hot sauce. You wanna squeeze it first, just like a regular pipette, and then suck up the hot sauce to the top mark that's on the skinny part of this pipette. It doesn't have to be exact because we're gonna weigh it Then squirt out as much of it as you can into this beaker and you're going to record the mass. Make sure you record all the digits. Now the first time I did this I screwed up and I put the whole hot sauce packet in this beaker so that's why it looks like there's so much in there. Make sure you only use one milliliter of hot sauce, okay? All right, you're gonna add 20 milliliters of distilled water. This is not my rinsing solution. This is a totally fresh beaker of distilled water. It doesn't need to be exact, okay, but close to 20 milliliters. Speaking of hot sauce solution, have you ever seen that movie Peanut Butter Solution? If not, I definitely wouldn't watch it. It'll give you nightmares. That's just my recommendation. It's called the children's movie that traumatized a generation. Okay, so they say to mix this up with a stir rod, but I found that that really wasn't necessary. So I just went ahead and swirled it. Then you want to measure the pH of your solutions to start. So they say to put it in the syringe first, the sodium hydroxide, but I do not recommend that. I would put it in a beaker to make it easier to measure the pH. So you're putting your, you're just pouring that bottle of 0.1 molar sodium hydroxide into this beaker and writing down the pH. I probably should have dabbed it first before putting it into the wash beaker because that way it'll kind of minimize the amount of liquid that's on there. You can see I'm going to do it twice because I'm kind of paranoid that I'm contaminating my water that I'm rinsing this with. But it ended up working out okay. So just be careful when you dab it that it's not too aggressive. Okay. 
Okay, then I'm gonna do the same thing with my hot sauce solution. You just need to wait a second for it to stabilize. Your pH might be different because mine is more concentrated than yours will be. It really smells like a toxic concoction. You probably want to have good ventilation so that you're not uh, tempted to sneeze. Okay, so now we're ready to go. Now they say to pour it using the funnel into this syringe. And that did not sound like a good idea to me. So in the beginning, I this is where I was kind of thinking, all right, well, maybe I'll try it and I'll follow the instructions. But then I decided, no, that doesn't sound like a good idea. So instead, I didn't use the funnel at all. I'm just gonna use the syringe and suck up all of the sodium hydroxide from this beaker. And that actually worked out really well. When you clamp it, just be careful that it's not too tight because you don't want the clamp to squeeze the plastic because that will distort the marks that are on there that you're using to measure. So normally we have more marks on our burettes to read the volume from. This one, it only has a mark every, I think, two milliliters. So you're gonna have to estimate more than you normally would. I don't recommend adding more than one milliliter at a time. If you feel you can accurately measure less than that, like half a milliliter, I'd go for it. So because we need to start with a certain initial volume, I'm just letting some of the sodium hydroxide out so that the meniscus is right on one of the lines. That'll make it easier for me to determine how much I've added. This pH meter has to go in the hot sauce and I don't wanna hold it the whole time. So I found this other clamp that came with the ring stand. This is kind of an off-market use of this, all right? It's not what it's normally for. So I'm just clamping it here so that that way I can kind of um, set up my pH meter or prop it up. All right, we're ready to go. So what you're gonna do is you're going to add small additions of base definitely not more than a milliliter at a time. You're gonna write down the volume off of the syringe or what you actually want is the total volume of sodium hydroxide that you've added at each point. After you add it, make sure there's not a drop hanging down. If you see one, you can kind of tap it. Then you're going to swirl the beaker to mix it and measure the pH. And you're just gonna keep doing that until you get to the end of your solution. Since you're making a pH titration curve, the pH is going to increase very slowly at first, and then it's going to increase very rapidly. That's going to be where you're going to find your equivalence point. After that steep part of that curve, you want to keep going just a little bit further in the basic region around pH 12 uh, so that you can get the other side of the curve, the excess sodium hydroxide region. So after it stays in the basic region and isn't climbing up very steeply anymore, that's when you can go ahead and stop. If you wanna keep your buffer solutions, you can pour them back in the bottle. Everything else can be rinsed down the sink with a lot of water. Make sure you rinse off your pH meter with distilled water and then put it back in the salt solution for storing. 